You're on the record for what you said, but you know the objective here is to make things work better. So uh, even if he doesn't answer your question immediately, there's you know always time after the meeting. Uh, he has a website, there's a hotline, and you know you can get your questions answered. Uh, I've been with this committee 11 years, and I've seen tremendous progress. Uh, both in service, technology and in social responsibility for transportation, where have done things, no fares through the snow, the remarkable job during COVID, uh, social responsibilities and adding buses going to Jones Beach. And, you know, recently what I saw was an offer to extend anyone having difficulty in really understanding the technology where they almost said the representative, okay, to come and help you. And I don't think we have more personalized service than that. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Kazoos. And I think that we have a, a, a sort of a, a boutique bus company uh, prior to nice transportation. Uh, we were captives and we still have a relationship with the MTA by virtue of the metro cars. So that's gonna stay for a while. But Nassau County has their own bus company. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Jack Kazoos to him to give us this presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody, for, for being here. It's good to see everybody. <coughs> Excuse me, after two years, uh, I'm a little grayer. Um, can't get much shorter, but I am a little grayer. Uh, but it's good to, good to see everybody here in the room today. We have, um, excuse me, we have a lot of our team members, uh, a lot of the directors and managers, <coughs> Chair Russell Mark, directors and managers that uh, help run the system. Um, uh, they really are uh, here to support our frontline employees. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, can I take a minute to? No, no, I just need a quick drink. Uh, to really help uh, support the frontline drivers mechanics, uh, and, and everybody else to help sort of run the system. So I, 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 I really appreciate them. Uh, I wanted them to be here and, and meet everybody. So our agenda today is pretty brief, as, as our, our chairman mentioned. Uh, we really want to talk about the scorecard. We're going to talk a little bit about the budget outlook and just get a little bit of a peek into what we see for next year. Um, and then uh, some service updates. And then, again, I'll take questions as they, as they arise. So our scorecard. Uh, we do this quarterly, uh, and again, uh, we've got, uh, let me put my glasses on so I can see. Um, so we break our scorecard into fixed route and paratransit, just to remind everybody, our on-time performance, um, our Q1 performance was 91%, our Q2 slipped a little bit to 89, 
um, but we are trending back up right now. Um, uh, our goal, our real goal, our operational goal is 92% on time performance for fixed route bus. Again, a suburban system that connects to the Queens, uh, we do about a million, 1.1 million miles a month. Um, that's a that's a pretty pretty good performance, but we always want to be better. Again, 92 is kind of our inter uh, internal goal. Uh, missed pullouts. Um, that means a pullout that didn't get off the gate here. Uh, that really speaks to reliability. We did see a small increase in missed pullouts. It was it was still within the the range, but we did see a, a you know, two tenths of one percent uh, of total pullouts did not pull out on time. Um, they did possibly pull out, but they missed the window of pull out. Um, that had a lot to do with somewhat of a of a switch over an aging, a little aging fleet between the new buses and the old buses. But uh, again, we're trending a little better now than we were then. Um, accidents, as you all uh, know, uh, you've experienced traffic what's going on, you know. Uh, I, I, I think traffic now is worse than pre-COVID. Uh, construction, uh, traffic, uh, so our accident numbers uh, crept up a little higher than we want them to. Uh, again, that goal is still within our range, but we want, really want that number below one. Uh, so that's for every 100,000 miles, how many accidents do you have? We have 1.1 accident per 100,000 miles. So. Um, we, we did gain a little bit of credit here for the on-time performance. Uh, missed pullouts and accidents were within range, so we were fine uh, there. Again, this doesn't. There's no money changed hands here. It's just credits and debits. On the paratransit side or able ride side, um, our, our call answer ratio has been has been very good. Um, again, the number of calls, uh, the percentage of calls answered before hang up. Um, you know, I'd like to see that number to to, to really stick at 95, 96 percent. Uh, but we're still above our target, which is, is pretty good. Where we did fall below performance, and I, I'm, I'll talk about why that is, is on on-time performance on paratransit. Uh, second quarter, it was only 79. Really, our internal goal is 85, so that fell well below our goal. Why? Two reasons. Number one, we saw a sharp increase in uh, uh, ride requests. Now, we didn't miss any rides, but we didn't get them there on time. So a large increase in ride requests, and we're not able to hire up our driver count to match the increase. And now we are doing better now. We're in the in we're in the mid 80s now, which is good. That's our target. So our our target has come back up. But but that was a disappointing number. We don't want to disappoint clients. Again, we we did not. Every client got a ride. Uh, so so that was good. But again, that that's a a disappointing number, so we're, we're back on track there. Missed pullouts, again, were a little high. Um, again, all clients got a ride, not a problem, but it was a little high. Um, it stayed within our range, but something a little higher than I want. And then I, our accidents, again. Uh, and these accidents, by the way, um, again, high, too high. As a matter of fact, we have to pay against that penalty. But um, uh, there, were, there were no major accidents. Most We count everything. We count when we back into a bush. We count when we nick a mirror. We count everything. So that number, uh, again, the, the severity isn't really measured in that. And then productivity was good. Uh, uh, we had one, you know, one and a half uh, people per trip, uh, passengers per hour, and, and that's that's a number that tends to do really well when your on-time performance is low. As you get your on-time performance higher, that number doesn't do as well. Uh, because people basically get just themselves in a car and, or in a, in a truck, uh, a van. So it, it's a little weird to look at. Um, but that's our report card. I, I will say it's not our proudest hour. Um, second quarter is not our proudest hour, and we have to do better. We are doing better now. We are trending better now. Um, a lot of it has to do with headcount issues. Now, I will tell you that on the paratransit side, we're hiring like crazy. On the fixed route side, we're hiring like crazy. And we've seen an uptick in, in our hiring now. So it seems like we're, 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 we're going in the right direction. So, so that's good news. We're not new. You know, obviously, everybody across the country is having driver shortages. Um, but, and it really hasn't affected uh, our service too much. Um, but but uh, we could be doing better. 
want to talk a little bit about the budget outlook, the timeline, just to remind everybody how this works. Um, uh, we're, we're in September right now. Uh, we've worked with our PPW team uh, that we report to the Department of Public Works. Uh, we worked through a, a rough budget number, um, and it's going through the process. Next, uh, the, the, the county legislators will approve the budget, uh, the number that we put in there. Uh, then NIFA approves the county budget. Uh, and then we, NICE Plus, uh, submits any other budget issues to the county. We work through that. Um, we present what we think the budget's going to be in March. And by now, we've had pretty stable funding. If you all remember three, four, five, six years ago, we saw a lot of ups and downs. We add service, we cancel service. We add service, we cancel service. But it's been a pretty consistent five years now. Mm -hmm. Not good. So uh, what Ms. Burst had said about before, where we have to sometimes guess and take a vote before the actual budget, right now, in the last three or four years, it's been pretty solid. So we'll come back, I'll give you a March pre presentation based on my work in Albany and what I hear about what's going on in the state, and then we'll find out April 1st if that really comes into fruition. All indications is no budget, uh, no, no issues with the budget, no service cuts, everything looks pretty good. Uh, we've added service, so, so things are, are good. I will say, you know, we've heard a little bit in the press about the MTA looking to possibly raise fares. I haven't heard of that lately, um, but that is a small possibility out there. And because our service is so tied in with them, including the Metro Card and eventually Omni, if they raise fares, we tend to raise fares also. Well, we'll see how that works out. I don't think that's going to happen uh, if I had to put my crystal ball to it, but. But I wanted to give everybody kind of, again, just a reminder of where we go for the next few months uh, on worrying about the, uh, the budget. So the budget starts April 1st through March 31st. So I um, wanted to give everybody a ridership update. This does not include September so far, which is really coming in really heavy. In other words, recovery is on it. Uh, we are at about 77, 76% recovered pre-COVID. Um, we want to get to 78% by the end of the year. I think we'll blow by that pretty easily. Um, uh, it, I'm looking at the numbers last weekend, especially on weekends. Uh, the weekend ridership is through the roof. Um, and uh, our weekday ridership is recovering quite well. Uh, and now September's back, and, and I, I, think, uh, I think it'll be back quite a bit. Though I will say the college parking lots are still a little empty. Uh, I know, I, visit the colleges this time of year. I was in Farmingdale this morning, and there was plenty of parking. So I'm not sure that there's as many students on campus as there used to be, but uh, the ridership recovery is, is, is really strong. Um, a lot of people going back to work now, back to the office. Gas prices are pushing people back on the, the buses again. Long Island Railroad is starting to see ridership return also. So our trips to Long Island Railroad are going to be more important as we go forward. Wanted to give uh, just again some service updates. Uh, westbound, North uh, New, uh, Nassau Community College, and Long Island Railroad rail trips are still underperforming the total system. So those are major trip generators. Again, colleges are down in, in, in enrollment, fiscal enrollment. Um, uh, westbound trips into the city and then Long Island Railroad connections are still down quite a bit, but they are recovering. Uh, weekend trips outperforming. I think we are now well beyond what we used to do on weekend pre-COVID. Um, and especially a few of the, 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 the routes specifically. And so we've got to look at how we can beat those routes up as we go on. Uh, fewer transfers indicates shorter trips. So more community-based trips instead of commuter trips. Uh, very different travel patterns. Um, much more migration to go mobile, away from cash and away from the metro card. Um, and then longer peaks in the PM. Our peaks are now going till 9 PM, 9.30. Um, travel patterns are a little different. AM peaks are still really concentrated. PMs are, are, are stretching out a little bit. Um, higher number of Spanish speakers. So we just finished our triangle, or our, our uh, system-wide demographic survey. We did it in, earlier this year in January, February, March. Put all the numbers together. We looked at all our ridership, de ridership demographics, and 
we've seen a huge spike in Spanish-speaking writers. So we are taking the appropriate measures. We have to change the way we do things a little bit. Um, how we s put signs in the buses. Maybe we go to pictographs instead of words um, to help all our writers, right? Um, is it uh, you know, more emphasis on Spanish-speaking drivers? Maybe we're going to start training drivers on basic Spanish phrases during their training uh, and remind them of those things. So very, very uh, important. Able Ride Ridership, this was done before September. Obviously, this slide was done before September. Able Ride Ridership recovery is at 65%. At this time, now it's matched. It's matched our fixed route. It's about 75%. So it is coming back really strong. Uh, and, and we're looking at creative ways to make sure that, that we're, we're serving that community as well as we always have. Um, fall schedule that just went out. Uh, I, I will say that uh, I'm proud to say that we've added service, uh, which is kind of unique in this environment. Many systems are reducing service because of driver shortages, and we added service. So increased weekday express service on the fours, the sixes, and the twenty twos. Those uh, are important um, because those were crowded vehicles. So now we've got more trip. Increased frequency on the N one. Still need more, but we're we're working toward it. The twenty G up in uh, Great Neck, N twenty six, and the N seventy eight. Uh, NCC service just started again. The buses are, are, are being ridden. They're not as crowded as they used to be, but, but uh, that service is very important. Increased frequency on the 43 on Saturday schedules. Uh, additional sound view service on the Fort Washington shuttle. Uh, additional PM service on the 78. And then uh, extended se seasonal service through September on the N88, the, the Jones Beach service. So um, want to report about MINI. Now, I'll, I'll remind everybody what MINI is. So MINI is an on-demand system using a smaller vehicle. Uh, very unique, and again, we're the first one that came up with this. So uh, yellow is our current fixed route service, and blue is the new MINI service. The rest of these are proposed. The service that we just launched is from um, Freeport to Lindbrook, and it serves three quarters of a mile on each side of Atlantic Avenue, and it connects multiple routes, the 32, uh, the, the 24, the 6, across the system, the 4. It connects all those systems. Um, you hail the, the, the bus with your phone on Mini. The bus responds within 10 minutes. It picks you up. It takes you anywhere within that service area, in that bubble. That bubble is really a cigar-shaped bubble. Uh, it's really been successful. We already hit our end of year goal as far as ridership goes. So the goal here and the big advantage here to many is if I want to travel to, if I'm in uh, Freeport and I want to go into the M6, for example, and go into the city, I don't have to go back to, uh, back to Hempstead, Rosa Parks. I can take the mini and connect. Connections are free, transfers are free. So it's a great system. Uh, again, it takes you where you want to, when you want to. Um, as we hope to in the next 24 months, all of the blue areas that you see will have mini service as we roll out, um, if, if we can obviously continue in success. So uh, it's been very successful. Uh, John Feldman's here. He's the, uh, the uh, father of mini um, and uh, really did, did a great job of this. It also takes, it's, it's completely ADA accessible. So if you're a paratransit customer, you can hail that ride right away and not have to call ahead. Um, we have new vehicles coming, 33 new Gilead CNG buses. Uh, they are running late because of supply chain issues. So uh, <coughs> unfortunately, it looks like they'll probably push into potentially next, part of them will push into next year. But we hope to get our first few in late October. Uh, but that, that's a very fluid time range. Uh, so that will mean that this year we've received will receive 133 new fixed route vehicles. So, uh, you know, almost a third of the, more than a third of the fleet will be brand new. Um, so that's, that's great for everybody. Um, quick project updates, and then we're almost done, really. Um, wanted to give everybody a uh, heads up. So, Rosa, we've been working on Rosa Park Central Transit Center uh, for about three and a half years. The last phase has just started. 
So the last phase is uh, we've already completed the stamped concrete work, but every surface will be replaced. All the floors, all the walls, there'll be a brand new uh, uh, refreshment stand, a, a little convenience store in there, new ADA doors. Uh, it, it, it looks great right now, it really does. Um, best it's ever looked. But when we're done with this, it'll, it'll be world class. It'll be really, really uh, sharp. Um, give everybody an update on the electric bus. Uh, as you know, we've got six electric buses coming. That's the one on the top there. Uh, the portable chargers have been delivered, so we have those now. We're expecting the first bus in November, December, and then we'll get the rest of them next year. We're developing a secondary charging location on the back of the property. Uh, we call it Oak Street. The buses will charge there. But eventually, uh, we'll build a standalone charging station that you see at the bottom. It'll be on the corner of Oak and Commercial. There's an old water purification plant there with an old rusted stack, smokestack. That will come down, and that's where we'll house all the electric buses. So uh, good to see that. Omni, uh, the digital fare payment system by the MTA replaces the Metro card. It's a tap and go system. Just tap your phone or your credit card or your uh, Omni card at the reader on the fare box. No more Metro card. Uh, this is a MTA product. Uh, they promised to share it with their affiliates, like ourselves in Westchester County and a few others. It's a little slower to roll out than we'd hoped, uh, but we're ready to go on our end. We're just waiting for the MTA to give us the thumbs up to go. Uh, but we have everything in place, ready to go. So uh, we're still working with them to get all the little uh, bugs uh, kind of figured out on that. So um, I, our chairman mentioned something. So we, we mentioned something about this earlier. We just launched Rider Assist, Nice Assist. So this is really designed, uh, transit can be confusing, if, especially if you're, not, if you're not from the area, you don't know the area, maybe you don't speak the language, maybe you have a disability. Or, or maybe you're just visiting, so you don't really have a, a, an opportunity to really learn the system. It takes some practice, right? So what we did is we launched this August 1st. Um, you call this number, request number, and within two hours, one of our supervisors will meet you at your stop. So they will help you get on the bus, they'll help you <coughs> to pay the fare, they'll, they'll do whatever they need to do to help you up along there. They'll tell you how the, how the kneeler works on the bus, how the, uh, the, the ramp works on the bus, uh, all the seats and everything else, how, how to navigate the system, how to read the system map, how to read the timetable, that kind of thing. So um, it, it, again, it's, it's mostly because I have anxiety when I ride. Not, not our system, obviously. <laughs> but uh, if I go to another system and, and you know, yeah, it's like, okay, am I getting on the right bus? Am I going to the right place? No one wants to get stranded, right? So we're trying to alleviate some of those anxiety issues. <clears throat> especially, um, again, especially for people brand new to the system. So, important for us, and uh, uh, you know, again, we want to make it frictionless for people to ride. Uh, community outreach. Uh, Erica is here. You guys know Erica. Um, this is just uh, since May. These are all the community outreach events that that she's going to do all the way through October. So uh, there's a ton. <laughs> There is a ton. Uh, Calvin High School, Baldwin Public School District, I'm not going to read them all, NUMC, a uh, couple at NUMC, Northwell Health, uh, Glen Cove City Hall, and Mineola Public Library, that kind of thing. So we're really trying to get out there to the public to, to talk about the benefits of writing. And, 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 and this is really a, a county asset that all citizens should be able to take advantage of. So we need to, do, to be out there and remind everybody of it, right? So Erica and her team have done that. They've done a great job. And again, she does all the branding and all the messaging, including social media. So really proud of that. Um, but, but that's all I've got uh, this time around. Pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy, I think. Um, but I, at this point, uh, Mr. Schrenkel, I don't know if you want me to answer questions from the board. Well, I'm going to certainly invite the uh, committee members to ask you a question. And apparently, you seem to have one. Uh, I I'd just like to know uh, where you stand financially on the budget, because uh, that wasn't part of the presentation. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to give me specifics in uh, a line by line item. Right. Uh, but I'd like to know if there's any you know, concerning variances. 
Yeah, no variances whatsoever. Uh, right now the budget shows that we are able to uh, sustain the current level of service, again, with no, uh, with no fare increase, um, no service cuts, uh, and, and potentially a couple more enhancements, little tweaks uh, to make service better. So we're, right as of now, assuming that the state uh, comes through with their, you know, their support, we're looking pretty good. Uh, you know, I, I tend to be a, a conservative person when we go to planning. Are you saying you're on budget? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Again, that's assuming that the state continues their very high level of support, and they've done a great job supporting the system. Assuming that stays in place, which we have indications that it will, uh, then, then we shouldn't have any issues. Yes, Just piggybacking off that, what would affect the STOA contribution? What, 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 STOA is about six, uh, almost 70% of our total budget. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a huge amount. The state, yeah. the, state, uh, the state is very good to Nassau County, um, and based upon our ridership, right? Our ridership is pretty high here. Sure. So, uh, and we depend on STOA uh, very well. That's why I spend a lot of time in Albany. I'll be there at the end of the, end of the month, already starting to talk to our, our representatives there about our needs to ensure that that stays in place. And they're pretty receptive to it. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Hurst? Yeah. <laughs> we know that I can't go to a meeting without having something. Well, um, I, I do have two items that I noted. Uh, when you were talking about the Spanish speaking writers, <laughs> You may want to confer with the police department. They have a new thing in the system for the entire department where on a phone, they have a system where a police officer can punch in when the person is talking to the phone and get it translated and speaks their language immediately on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that might want to be yeah. investigated to idea. see about sharing it yeah. here. Yeah. It might make it easier then training everybody how to speak a language when there's like 29, 30 languages they'd have to know. Right, yeah. Where, yeah. where this little program identifies when the person speaks mm -hmm. and they know what language it is and they either get an interpreter on the phone or have a computer. I don't know the full thing of how it works, yeah. but it's currently in operation. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a good idea. I so, would sort of investigate so, that. So that's something, you know, the first thing. The second thing is, is not anything that you had in the presentation. I think whoever handles what goes on with the buses by the Hicksville train station, uh, sometime after uh, November, the permits are going to go through and the major construction for 99 New Bridge Road, Nelson Avenue, and Duffy Avenue is going to start. And I know that it's going to interfere with the sidewalks where the buses park to have their bus stops. Yeah. So on top of what I've been saying for years, we've got to get the buses off Newbridge Road. Here it is, you're going to have a conflict almost immediately. And okay, the town says they'll monitor it, but it's still a private construction developer that they're going to do what they want to do when they're doing their construction. So I think we have to be proactive with the buses to make sure it doesn't interfere because this is a key spot. And then if a snowstorm comes, and we have what I always complain about, where the state piles the snow, the buses are halfway out into the driving lane, now you've got that same situation from the construction. Yeah, so, so we've got to get on top of that, find out when they're going to start, and make plans. Yeah, we'll do. We'll so do. That's, that's what I had a meeting uh, Monday night that told me that's now a definite go. It's just a matter of how fast it's going to go. Yeah, good. good okay, excellent. Anyone so else? Mr. Uh, Dear yourself. All I can say is to praise you guys because we start with you from the beginning. And we saw when we understood what happened from the beginning. Now, you said for, for the past five years, your budget been very strong. We hope they stay, yeah. stay with you know, yes. with their support. Yeah. But um, I praise you guys. I commend you. Thank you. It's it's not it's nothing that I would like to say. I don't, I'm not <laughs> looking. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not looking for anything wrong. Yeah. But I guide the process, 
I look everywhere, they clean. Those guys, they are very professional. It's nothing. I look for them. <laughs> <laughs> so I really commend you guys for doing a good job. Well, thank you, Ms. Bench. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it, it's this team, really, that, mm -hmm. that does it. So. And let me add that uh, Mr. D. Rousseau, of course, uh, has experience yeah, in this area. Certainly does. A state of former bus driver. It certainly does. And to my left, we also have a former mm -hmm. bus driver who worked for the MTA for many years. And uh, Tony, uh, is, uh, Tony Rosario. I'll piggyback on, on what uh, the chairman said also, that there is an exceptional job. I've seen the progress. I've been here from the beginning. Yeah. And uh, you come traffic, like you said, I, my head was bopping when you said about traffic. It's almost double what it was pre, pre COVID. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. Where these cars are there. And the buses are doing the best that they can. I drove out there in those traffic. So yeah. I know when you said about the accidents, yeah. it's, uh, and I don't know, MTA, everything was preventable. So, <laughs> <laughs> I see they understand that word. Yeah, we, have, we all live that, so. But, uh, it's not easy, and I, said, I commend the drivers for what no, they, they do. They, they do a great job, and, and it is. we all try to support that and remember that every day. So that's I, I hope I hope that uh, we get the support for the budget because yeah. Long Island needs it. A lot of, more people are working, apparently, <coughs> and there's still more jobs that need to be filled. But yeah. you guys are doing your part. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Ms. Falcon. Yeah. Um, no, I was just asking earlier about. Tell us who you are. Please tell us what town you're from. If there's a specific uh, bus issue, <coughs> needless to say, or let me say, tell us which bus driver it is, uh, so that uh, the corrective action needs to be taken. Uh, we can try and do it, uh, sir. Yeah, I guess I'm the public. <laughs> <laughs> He's Joe. sitting in the right direction. <laughs> Joe Tresidia from Levittown. And uh, before I even begin with my comments, I just want to offer something on my trip today, taking the uh, 49 and 27. I find, I, I found that uh, about 50-50 masked versus unmasked on the right, if that's of interest to anyone. Yeah. And I'm a hybrid because I still wear a mask on the bus. I still wear a mask in a store. But I'm not wearing one here, so it's like I'm just sort of ratcheting down. But I thought that was interesting at about 50%. Yeah, that's uh, about 1%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so happy 10th anniversary to Nice. Nice is 10, and my grandchildren are 5 and 2. I haven't changed at all, so uh, <laughs> where does the time go? As a regular rider, I had my share of trepidations when Nassau County's MTA bus operation was privatized, and there were times of budget and service cuts that justified those fears. But since becoming a regular part of these meetings, I've seen NICE become a system we can be proud of, run by dedicated individuals who listen to their customers, and whenever possible, act on their behalf. Under NICE, improvements have been made throughout Nassau's bus transportation system, both in scheduling and, in, and infrastructure, with only minimum adverse effects on less traveled routes. Referring more specifically to my personal focus on altogether now Newbridge Road, <laughs> Two years, you still remember. <laughs> While we lost the uh, luxury of the N50, the weekday schedule for the N49 has been normalized to hourly service at a consistent time that reduces the need to check schedules and online sources. 
and the additional added benefit of increased early morning and evening service surpassing even that of the MTA. Saturday schedules still have the inconvenient 90 minute gaps, so uh, you can get an A but not an A plus. <laughs> But with, week, but with weekend ridership going through the roof, I'm hoping that'll change. But I must say I'm both pleased and satisfied with all of the progress made. And uh, I, last thing, I also add that since the lessening of the pandemic situation, my renewed experiences with NICE have been overwhelmingly positive. So everyone, Keep up the good work, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.